Hi everyone, this is Amy from the Helms Academy and today we're going to be going over how to understand tables and specifically analyzing the variables that we see in a table. So the table we're going to be looking at today is on the screen and reading a table really involves multiple parts. The table that we're going to look at today is from the High Set Free Practice Test 7. So first, the first thing you should always look at on a table is the title. What's this table about? Why was it put together? So here we see this is the percentage of region in each drought classification. So we're talking about drought, which is a lack of rain. Um, we're talking about different regions. And we see it percentage. That's really important because it tells us that the numbers we see are in percentage form, even if we don't see the percent sign. Now over on the side, we see that there are two different regions. So the top four lines are about region E and the bottom four are about region F. So it's important to keep those distinct as well. If you're able to write on the table that you see, it might be a good idea to put a bold line or kind of draw that along the middle just so you remember to keep those separate. Now up at the top are all of our headers for the different information. So we have the day, whether it was abnormally dry, moderate drought, severe drought, extreme drought, exceptional drought, and then the total percentage by percentage by total area affected by the drought. Now, if you look over on the side, you'll see in region E, it's July 5th, 12th, 19th, and 26th, and then it repeats again. So you see those same days in region F, July 5th, 12th, 19th, and 26th under the days. So that helps us to organize how this information is put together and helps us to make comparisons. If we want to compare the two regions on July 5th, we can look at those specific lines. Now, all the information down here are, the, again, the specifics. So whether that's the day or the percentages, you need to be paying attention to um, specifically what maybe similarities or differences we might see in different parts of this table. And similarly down here, we'll want to pay attention to this total line as well. So again, we're going to do some analysis with this table and taking in all of the different information that it has to be able to interpret it, answer questions that they might ask you on the test. Let's take a look at this question. It says, in the time period presented, in which drought classification were the percentages of affected areas in regions E and F the most similar. Now we can see that our options here are some of those different categories that we saw listed along the top of our table, abnormally dry, moderate drought, severe drought, or extreme drought. So it's good to look at the answers ahead of time because this gives us a more limited focus on what we're looking for and how we should answer this. And again, we're looking for which of these times or which of these classifications has the most similarity between our two regions. So the first thing I'm going to remember is that I need to look at my region separately. So I need to look at region E as one and look at region F as one. But to make a comparison, I can do that by looking at those different vertical columns and comparing what I see in the top group and what I see in the bottom group. So for example, I see under abnormally dry all zeros in region E and then 11, 11, 12, 15 in region F. For moderate drought, all sixes in region E with different um, decimals there. And then down at the bottom, all fives in region F. Severe drought, I see 13s and 14s in region E, and then eight, nine, 10, 11, or eight, nine, 10, and 12, excuse me, on region F. And for extreme drought, I see 31, 30, 30, 30 on the top, and then 16, 15, 14, 15. So right away, I can look at some of these and I can even look over at exceptional drought as well and see those disparities. And I want to figure out which one of these is actually the most similar in, in which category are the numbers most similar and closest together. So if I were to look at that, I definitely am drawn to moderate drought, right? Fives and sixes very close together in their numbers there um, and much different from zero to 11 or eight to 14 or 16 to 30, those are big gaps between the differences. A moderate drought is a very uh, reasonable amount there. A lot of similarities. So that's what they're looking for in this question. 
is to identify the ones most similar. For question 12, it says, which statement about regions E and F are true? And it give us five, four statements here. And the tricky part is we have to really evaluate each one to figure out what the answer is. These are more difficult questions. So if you see a question like this and you know you're short on time, um, this is a good one to maybe take a guess on and then see if you have time to come back at the end. Um, but we're going to take our time to make it through this one today so that you have an idea of how to solve it. So it says the total area of region E affected by drought is less than that of region F. So if we take a look at our table again, um, we want to look at region E and region F and the total percentage area. Well, in region E, it's 100 percent. And in region F, it's um, 44 to 50 percent. Um, on different days. So letter A is not going to be a good option. All of region E and about half of region F are affected by drought. So let's take a look again. Yes, all of region E is affected by drought. We see 100%. And it says about half of region F. Well, true, we see half on July 26th, and the other days are in the 44 to 45 range. So absolutely B looks like a really good contender. C says the drought affecting region E is less severe than that affecting region F. Well, if we go back again, we see a lot of exceptional drought in region E. We see that 100% of it is affected by drought. And we know that that's not um, better than region F. That's actually significantly worse. So C is not going to be a good option. And lastly, D, most of both regions E and F are affected by exceptional drought. Now, when I look at the exceptional drought column, which is there on the right side, next to where the circle is, I notice that region E has uh, almost half of it is affected by exceptional drought, but region F actually has a very small percentage there. So with that in mind, B is going to be our best option. For our last question today, uh, it says in region G, 75.42% of the area is categorized as being affected by uh, exceptional drought. How do the drought conditions in regions E, F, and G compare? So I just want to look over again at our table here. We have region F and we have region E, but we don't have anything about G on here. So that makes me wonder, where does that come from? Well, they're giving us additional information to compare to what we already know. And that information is that this area, region G, all we know about it is that 75% of the area is categorized by exceptional drought. So I wanna just take a moment to compare that. If we look again at our table, we see that um, region E is you know, around 47 to 49% uh, exceptional drought. And region F is one or 2% exceptional drought, if you look in that column. So that makes me think, hmm, sounds like region G is, has a lot more exceptional drought at 75% than either of these regions. So let's go back and look at the question again. A says exceptional drought conditions are affecting region F more than region E and G. Well, we just did our comparison and we said, no, G actually is being affected the most of the three of them. So that's not going to be a good option. B says exceptional drought conditions are more widespread in region E than in regions F and G. Well, again, if we look at this, we can see that region E has 50%, right around the 50% mark of exceptional drought. But we know that G is 75%. So again, not a good option. C says the drought conditions in regions E, F, and G are similar. Well, again, G is 75%, 50%, 2%. Those are very distinct. So C, not a great option. D says exceptional drought conditions are affecting a greater percentage of the area in region G than in either regions E and F. And just like we just talked about at the beginning, that's absolutely true, right? 75% of region G versus the 50 or 2% of the other regions. So our best answer based on this table would be D. Thank you so much for watching today and good luck as you're reading these charts, graphs, and tables for your test. We have some other videos on our channel if you'd like to check them out to learn more about charts and graphs. 
about taking the science test or the math test and about preparing for all types of things to do with HiSET, TASC, and GED. I hope that you will subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed what you learned here today. And don't forget to check out the Helms Academy in other places online, including Instagram and Facebook and on our website at helmsacademy.org.